Hi everyone, Tony from Back the Movies here, and today we're going to talk about the original Willy Wonka movie, because they're about to ruin it again. So why not go back and look at the only good Willy Wonka movie so far? And today I have with me a very special guest, probably the best guest we've ever had. We haven't done the episode yet, but I'm already calling it better than everyone else. Uh, my, my queen, my goddess, Josie from Fish Tank. Hello, Josie. Hello. My name's Josie, aka Sheep Crossing, and I watched the Wonka movie for the first time. Talk, talking, talk, talking, talking about tapes. There's a very specific reason why I wanted you for this episode, which fans of yours probably already know uh, what that is, but people who don't know will will soon find out. Uh, so yeah, so you were unaware. Have you ever like heard of this movie, or did you just never get around uh. to seeing it until recently? I knew it existed, kind of, a little bit. I've seen yeah. that. Um, there's a lot of uh, gifs of Wonka guy. He's like doing this. Yes. Like, that's, a, that's a reaction gif. I see a lot. Yes. Uh, this movie was huge. Um, it's based off a book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The movie is almost like the book. It it made a bunch of changes. Uh, actually, the Tim Burton Johnny Depp version is technically closer to the book, but it's just not as good of a movie. Uh, was written by uh, what's his name, uh, Roald Dahl, who wrote a lot of children's films, oh, like uh, yeah. yeah, like uh, James of the or children's books, like James of the Giant Peach and whatnot. He, uh, from what I remember, he does not like this movie. Uh, I don't think, well, liked. I think he's dead. I don't think he agreed with some of the changes, and I think he wasn't thrilled that they turned it into a musical. I'll have to fact check that, but that's they one not, of the things like, I check in with him <laughs> first. Uh, well, I mean. They rarely care about the source material sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it was smart they made it a musical. Some of these songs are now iconic and in like, yeah. like they've been parodied a million times. I have a very specific parody I want to bring up later. Um, but they didn't even get the title right. Like I said, they called it Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory instead of Charlie. Uh, but yeah, it became like a huge phenomenon. Now, like, I was like a weird kid when I was. Uh, this might shock you. Josie, you might be looking at my fake video store in the background. <laughs> you might be surprised that I was like kind of a weird kid. Uh, I watched like kids movies, right? But I also watched like super violent R-rated movies. Uh, but as I got older, I like revisit kids movies less and less. But this is the one that I could actually go back to uh, because it's got like enough adult humor in it. And uh, Gene Wilder's like comedic performance as Willy Wonka is just incredible. Like his super sarcastic uh, tone and everything so it's like one of the few movies aimed toward kids that i can actually still enjoy was as it an adult kids? That movie, the movie was kind of really scary i don't know it creeped me out <laughs> if you look back a lot of like kids movie stuff like they some of them were pretty scary uh there's some terrifying things in older kids movies uh but yes and i like i said i have read the book like a million years ago i i don't remember a lot about it but uh yeah so like this is your first time watching it and uh, what, what were you expecting going in? Um, I was expecting it to be a lot like the uh, Johnny Depp version, which it kind of yeah. was. But yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be so uh, creepy. And I didn't expect it to be a musical. And I actually really liked it, which I didn't expect. Usually I don't, I don't really like watching movies. <gasps> oh, wait, what? <laughs> what? What are you? What are you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can I refund this shirt? Am I allowed to send this shirt back? I like watching... I like animated movies a lot, so that's why oh, I didn't no. expect to like it because it wasn't an animated movie. I was like, Oh, I sorry, I, Josie. Movie. We have a very hard rule here at Hack Movies that uh, cartoons are for children, okay? <laughs> now, let's talk about this children's <laughs> film. It opens up with the candy shop owner singing about Candyman. This was going to be, I think, Sammy Davis Jr. originally, uh, but like what the filmmakers were like, that's too big of a star for the beginning of the movie for like a minor character. That's going to be real distracting. <laughs> But I think he ended up like singing that song in his act. But yeah, he's mostly talking about Willy Wonka. And uh, yeah, the whole song is about giving just poison to children that, that gives them all diabetes. And he's really thrilled about it. The Candyman. The Candyman can. <laughs> and I don't know, like um, you might have seen a million comments pointing out that I'm a little heavier. I, you might have seen those. But I'm not really a big sweets guy. That's the one funny thing about this like movie. I'm like, wow, these people 
fucking really love candy and chocolate. Yeah, I, don't know. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, <laughs> these people are obsessed with it. I never get that excited about hard candies. Yeah. I don't know. Like, usually those are the ones you uh, throw away because you don't want them. <laughs> what about chocolate? I mean, chocolate is all right, but just straight up plain chocolate, like nothing else in it. Is yeah. Good. They, they like, everyone in this movie is just like really excited for chocolate as if it had like just been invented. And it's yeah. like the most amazing thing in the world. I'm like, oh, it's, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, we learned a little bit about Charlie. He's a, he's a poor paper boy and he really wants to help his family. Uh, he's also really interested in the Wonka factory. Uh, all the years watching this, I never understood who that creepy guy was. Yeah, that... the guy with like a <laughs> cart of knives and other sharp yeah. stuff. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, the, like Charlie's looking at the factory. He's like, oh, I wonder what's in there. And this guy's like, no one knows what's in there. It's so terrifying. Like, there's another creepy guy throughout this movie and he gets revealed at the end. But this dude, I don't know what the hell is. That guy was just a murderer. He's in his he own just movie. He showed up for like... Uh, <laughs> Just that one scene never shows up again, except yeah. like, Charlie called him a tinker. What the, what's a tinker? That look, I think that was not a tinker. That's a murderer. Yeah, that's that's a that's a homeless murderer. That's like a really <laughs> creepy person. That looks like someone who probably would have been invited into the fish tank to fuck up with the guy. <laughs> what, would you, what would you have done if like just a guy came in with like a shopping cart full of knives? Would that have been it for you? Would you be like, ah, right, you know, this is enough. This is enough. I mean, He's got a cart of knives, so I mean, one for everyone. You have a fighting chance. <laughs> I don't think I don't think this guy wants to share his knives, uh, Jesse. <laughs> oh, he's a big knife sharing guy. Um, so Charlie's dad is dead. His mom is very poor, and his grandparents apparently have just been in bed for twenty years. Yeah, why does he have so many grandparents? Usually, people have one, right? Well, why was there four or like two? Why was there four? Well, 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 Josie, usually, you know, the nuclear family, the mother has two parents and the father has two parents. I know it's a foreign concept these days, but, but when you're lucky, both sets of grandparents are sometimes alive. Not all the time. I mean, mine were, and I only had two. I had my, my mom's parents growing up, but you know, I guess Charlie hit the jackpot on having <laughs> elderly people as a burden on his life. The jackpot. He's just waiting for them to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like, I, what kind of life are they living? They never say why they're like. I get they're old, but it's like, well, why are you guys in bed? Are you are you sick? Yeah. Can you, are you like handicapped? Like, what the hell is going? Do you have bed pants? How are they shitting? I don't know. These are very important questions. I think I saw a bed. I mean, I noticed a bowl under the bed when he goes to grab slippers at one point. I'm like, yeah, that's that's the shit bowl. That makes sense. That makes sense. But yeah, they all just sit in bed and stare at each other and just wait to die i guess and i'm like that's a that's a horrifying life no wonder charlie wants to drown himself in chocolate jesus so yeah we get a uh we get a little backstory on wonka grandpa joe he's just like hey the walk the wonka factory was great it was this uh, amazing thing but a bunch of spies were getting in uh and they were leaking stuff to uh the rival uh slugworth and then wonka just you know laid off his entire staff probably ruined their lives uh, and he shut down the factory, but then years later, the factory opened up, but no one knows who's making the chocolate. That's the big mystery. Okay. Did, did you have any guesses who made the chocolate when you were going into this? Uh, who does make the chocolate? Is it just him? <laughs> no, it's the Oompa Loompas. Oh, the, we oh <laughs> yeah. I, when I watched it again, I forgot that the Oompa Loompas were a thing. Yeah. So I was so surprised. I was like, I forgot about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get into them too because there's a. I have an issue with the Oompa Loompas. I have an issue with this children's film from the seventies, Josie. I, it's very important. We have to take it seriously. So no one's ever gone into the factory. No one knows what's in there. But luck would have it. There's a contest. There's five Wonka bars that have a golden ticket, and when you get the ticket, you get uh, to go into the factory and win a prize, like full, like a free year's worth of chocolate. Yeah, and people are going nuts. People are going nuts. They need they need to see what's in the factory. I mean, I'd I mean I'd wait like for one person to go in and just tell me. Like I'm not really interested. Like I'd be, so I'm in Pennsylvania, uh, and I'm like Hershey, Hershey, Pennsylvania is where they make a bunch oh, of Hershey yeah. chocolates. Yeah, when I was a kid, we would go there and we would learn how the chocolate was made. And uh, when I walked out of that experience, I went, okay, 
That's it. I, I, it didn't change my life. Uh, <laughs> you walked out like that could have been condensed in a how it's made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was just like, I didn't even ask to go. You know, it was a kid. It was a family vacation. I'm like, oh, I guess that's how chocolate's made. Um, cool. When can we ride the roller coasters? Like, but these people yeah, were well, like, holy. Yeah. What would you rather have? Uh, be, what would you rather do? Be on like a bunch of roller coasters or learn how chocolate's made? Roller coasters after a bunch of chocolate so I could throw up or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds okay. like the perfect well, mix. Well, that's a, that took a weird twist there, Josie, <laughs> but okay. Uh, <laughs> have you ever been told you say things weird sometimes? Did anyone ever tell you that? Uh, yeah, I think so. A lot of people think I say like <laughs> I don't. The only reason I'm bringing it up is because you say perfectly normal things that I agree with. <laughs> um, so, yeah, people are, like, losing their mind. Like, Charlie's teacher doesn't even want to teach math. He's like, fuck this. Let's go get some tickets. Yeah. Uh, and the first winner is probably the kid who needs chocolate the least um. in this contest, Augustus Gloop. Uh, this kid, he's got a problem. He's He's got a problem. See, I didn't get fatter till later in life, Josie, until I started drinking and dating women. Uh, by the way, don't recommend doing either of those. Uh, just don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, but this kid, he's like a million pounds right out the gate. Uh, and he apparently wants more chocolate. I I don't know why. It seems like he has enough. Uh, but this is when we start getting this uh, strange man with the scar who's like whispering things into their ear. That That's no one ever asked who that guy is. Yeah, he yeah. was creepy, right? And he's like on TV. Like they see him because he's in front of cameras and no one says anything. That's the funny thing. He only ever hides once to give these orders. <laughs> every every other time, he's just like right in their ear, like telling them everything. <laughs> Grandpa Joe kind of sucks. What do you what are your thoughts on Grandpa Joe? I do not like Grandpa Joe. He's right? a horrible he, person. Like he's uh I don't know if you ever like knew anyone who was a degenerate gambler or like were related to a degenerate gambler. He's giving Charlie way too much hope. Yeah. It's like a one in a billion chance. He's like, Charlie, you're going to find it. You're going to find it. It's like, oh, don't do that to the kid. You're going to like mess him up. Listen, you got to be 99% of gamblers <laughs> lose right before they make it big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, Look, you might hit. That's good if you do, but like, relax about it. Don't don't tell him he's going. When I go to the casino, I don't assume I'm just gonna hit it big. I'm like, all right, hey, you I want it more though. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm pretty. Whenever I like make a decent amount of money, you can see, you know, I'm like, okay, I, I'm calling it quits. I'm getting out of here before I spend more. The next character that we're introduced to, I hate this character with all of my being. Veruca Salt. The girl who wants everything now. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did you feel about her? She was, she's really annoying. I, I think I liked her in the uh, Johnny Depp movie because she interacted with squirrels. And that's all I remember. And there were yeah. some squirrels in this movie. Yeah, the squirrels are from the book. Uh, that's one of the changes they made for this movie. Um, yeah, she's the she's like putting her dad out of business. He runs like a <laughs> peanut factory. And all the people who should be shelling the peanuts are shelling Wonka bars. <laughs> and I feel bad for the lady who finds the ticket and then just gives it to the boss. I'm like, oh, I would have. Yeah, I feel like she could have <laughs> sold that for a lot more than like a yeah. pound raise. Is that what they were giving her? Yeah, yeah, just a pound raise. I would have just kept it for myself. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that would have been fun. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he basically cheats getting her this ticket because she mm -hmm. wants everything now. She's very greedy. Uh, which will be her undoing, which will be all their undoings, really. Yes. Okay, so Veruca is like the most annoying. Violet's the grossest one. Yeah. What What was up with the gum? Like, she, she, she the, puts the gum creep her ear. Yeah, the gum creeps you creeps me out. Does it creep you out? Yeah, it's it's definitely disgusting. Yeah. Um, I would assume. I hope she washes behind her ear as well. I, I hope so too. Unsanitary. I'm sorry, Jesse. I have to pause. Is that a race car bed behind you? Oh, yeah. I sleep in a Ferrari. <laughs> no, I only bring it up <laughs> because for a year, there, there's a certain section of Reddit who does not like me. Uh, mm -hmm. And they took a picture of my old guest room mm -hmm. and they uh, thought that that was my actual bedroom. And for years, they've been saying that I sleep in a race car bed. <laughs> What's and wrong with that? 
they made fun of me for years for sleeping in a race, which I, which what it was a regular bed. It had stupid blankets on it, but they're like, yeah, my race car bed. And then those same people made fun of me when the picture of me wearing the shirt went viral, <laughs> like insulting me. And now here I am, and you have a goddamn race car bed. Great minds think alike. I guess so. Again, I don't have a race car bed. Okay. Anyway, I, I have nothing against race car beds. I mean, I, they're very practical. Like, would, would this movie have been better if the grandparents were in a race car bed? You think that would be yeah, better? Yeah, all four of them in a twin-sized bed. <laughs> That's that's why, that's that's why they all lost their money. They're like, we spent all our money on this giant race car bed. Uh, so yeah, Violet wins. Uh, Violet wins the ticket. She's gross. She's obsessed with gum. She's been chewing on gum for like months and months and months. So Charlie's sad, and his mom is like the only voice of reason in that house because Grandpa Joe is a con man. The other three, I think, are like senile. They don't say anything. <laughs> they bar- they barely say anything. But Charlie's mom is the one that's like, hey, Charlie, you're probably not going to get the ticket, all right? You, you got to, like, maybe relax about it. But then she's also kind of hopeful. She's like, hey, it's not the end of the world if you don't get the ticket. If things will get better. And that leads to the uh, Cheer Up Charlie song, which people have said, I found out in recent years, people apparently don't like this song. Like, people apparently really hate this song, and I don't know why. Cheer up, Charlie. It wasn't the best one in the movie. I don't know about hating it. Yeah, it's not the best one. I actually kind of like it. But yeah, I found out like there's this thing where like people just don't like the Cheer Up Charlie song. I'm like, I can't I can't bring myself to have strong, appeal- strong feelings on this song either way. Uh, and then the last kid, this is a, they really ran out of uh, the creative naming here. Oh, They're yeah. like, this next kid is Mike TV. <laughs> he loves TV. Was that apparent? Did you were you able to pick up on that? It's his destiny. It's in his name. <laughs> It really is. It's like, okay, well, what else is he going to do? Um, the Oh, so in between all the people winning, they show how other people are, like, trying to get the tickets. Okay. And they're kind of funny. Like, uh, there was the guy with the computer, and the computer is fighting with him. My, my favorite, favorite one. Sorry, the, you go, you go, you go. My favorite one was the... Uh... The, the lady who's like her husband's have been uh, kidnapped or something and for ransom they want her box of Wonka bars she's like how long do I have to think this over <laughs> that part cracks me up because she really does do a total 180 she's like they kidnapped him I'll do anything for him and the cops are like oh they want the Wonka bar she's like oh I don't know <laughs> I don't know is that related what would you what would you do in that situation I mean, after seeing how much everyone wants this ticket, it's like, I don't know. I could retire on this ticket. <laughs> uh, is that my husband probably wants me to have a good life, good retirement. Uh, <laughs> they never, they never follow up on that. Was the husband yeah. dead? Did he die? Like, I really want to know. Like, yeah, probably. <laughs> just, this poor guy. They're like, your wife wouldn't give us the bars and they'd blow his head off. <laughs> um. So, yeah, th- then there's this uh, fake out where everyone thinks the contest is done uh, because a guy in South America won the ticket. Yeah. Uh, Charlie's very upset about this because he thought he was going to win the ticket because, again, his grandfather is a con man and really <laughs> got his hopes up. Uh, so, yeah, Charlie is, um, I don't know, he's probably off to kill himself because uh, uh, he because he, he previously he tried to open like two bars of uh, chocolates. And none of them worked. Uh, which his teacher made fun of him for. I thought that was really mean. Yeah. <laughs> so when he's like, how many? Two? Yeah, he's like, how many bars of chocolate did you open? And they're like, oh, 300, 200. And he's like, no, it's just two. He's like, what the hell? It's like, dude, do you not know that your, like, student is, like, super poor? Well, I can't figure out just two. So let's pretend you open 200. I don't think you're supposed to, like, I mean, yell at them. <laughs> he was teaching them probabilities that day. I guess yeah. Charlie wasn't aware of the probability of his chances of winning, so that's why he only bought two. It's a teacher's yeah, fault. Because his <laughs> fucking uh, shady grandfather gaslit him into thinking he was going to win. Ugh. What an asshole. <laughs> um, so yeah, it turns out that guy in South America, total liar. He made it up. Uh, Charlie ends up winning the ticket. Sup- like, uh, By the way, the whole crowd like rushes him. I yeah. thought they were going to... When, when I first saw this... As like a little kid, I'm like, oh, they're gonna beat the shit out of him. <laughs> I was waiting He's for them to like fight him. <laughs> Luckily, there's just one old guy who knows who he is. He's like, go home right now. 
this or reminds me of one um, person in the crowd is yeah. like, you guys are gonna kill him. Yeah, yeah, they're very <laughs> apparent about it. This reminds me of uh, there was like um, that viral image from years ago where like the one guy he hit the lottery, but he didn't want any of his friends or family knowing. So I don't know if you ever saw that picture. He got like the lottery ticket. He went to cash it in wearing like a bag over his head or oh, something. Yeah. He, he didn't want anyone to know. That would be me if I was in this movie. I'd just be wearing a bag over my head the whole movie. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not me. Um, Slugworth intercepts him. This is the only time Slugworth is being uh, like shady and quiet about it. Yeah. Whereas before he's just whispering in their ear right in front of everyone. But we finally learn what he wants. He's like, hey. There's something called an everlasting gobstopper. If you give that to me, your family's going to be rich. All right, go home and think about it. <laughs> um, yeah, and what could you believe it, Josie? Grandpa Joe could just walk now. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's a miracle. It is a miracle. <laughs> I think Appar the whole time. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> atrophy doesn't exist <laughs> in this world. Yeah. Not only can he walk, he can do a whole song and dance number. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he sings the Golden Ticket song. And um, are you are you a South Park fan? I haven't seen many episodes, no. That's fine. It's only been on for like 30 years. <laughs> You'll catch up one day. Uh, there's an episode where Cartman learns what Tourette syndrome is. And he realizes he can have an excuse to curse and say whatever he wants. And like when he finds that out, like in his head, he starts singing this song. He's like, I have a oh Golden Ticket. <laughs> Wait, I think I've seen a clip of that. <laughs> I've got a golden ticket. That is a good episode. That is a good episode. Uh, yeah, it's just like I got a golden twinkle in my eye, and then he starts. <laughs> he just starts cursing everyone out. Um, so yes, everyone gathers around the chocolate factory. They've all they've all agreed to go along with this. Willy Wonka comes out, and this is what this was a requirement by Gene Wilder to be in the movie. Like, they asked him to be Willy Wonka, and he said, no, I want to do a scene where I walk with a cane, and then I fake everyone out, and I'm not <laughs> going to do the movie unless I can do this scene. Really? Yeah. And uh, his whole, he's got a good point, though. It's like, because it lets you know, like, it lets the audience know early on that, like, Wonka could be lying. They don't know if they should trust yeah. him or not. Um, yeah, I love that scene where he puts the cane, and then he does the flip. I really like Gene Wilder. Have you seen any of his other movies? No, I, I saw his face and he kind of scares me. <laughs> okay. About the, I don't know. He is a very intense actor. Um, He's in some of the best comedies you'll ever see. Uh, Are you aware of who Mel Brooks is? I've heard of the name. Okay, he directed Young Frankenstein, which stars Gene Wilder, and Blazing Saddles, which Gene Wilder is also in. He was in The Producers. Uh, He's in so many movies. Um, And he was always great. He died a few years back. Uh, but yeah, he is one of like a, just a legendary, uh, comedic actor. Uh, and this is probably his most famous performance ever. He really nailed it with this. I love how sarcastic he is with everyone. You don't know he's being sarcastic yet where he's saying hi to everyone, but then throughout the film, you could tell like, he doesn't give a fuck about any of these people. Yeah. <laughs> he brings them all into the factory and he says, we have so much time and so little to see. Wait a minute. Strike that. Reverse it. Now, I think I told you they are uh, they're making a prequel to this movie. Oh, yeah. I watched yeah. the uh, thing for that. Yeah, and Timothy Chalamet <laughs> tries to do this line, and it's it's weird. It looks like it's a prequel to this movie, but the actor in the new movie looks like he's acting like Johnny Depp. It's very confusing. Yes. Quiet up and listen down. Nope, scratch that. Reverse it. But yeah, just the new actor, who's not a bad actor, him just butchering that line delivery. I was like, oh, man, this is going to gonna suck. And then there's a giant release form on the wall. Josie, can you relate to having to sign a NDA or giant <laughs> release form before you enter a uh, house of madness? Yeah, and I definitely read, did not read all of it. I mean, kind of. I had someone else skim it for me. Okay, <laughs> going for it. Look, Josie, it worked out for you this time, but uh, just some <laughs> advice going forward. You're going to want to read all of your contracts. <laughs> and don't uh, I'm not going to ask who you had skim it for you but if you're going to have anyone else trust me I know from personal experience if you're going to have anyone else read your contract try to make it like a lawyer or something <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just some advice just some advice um, so yeah they all signed the release form uh, 
he i like how like willy wonka is just playing dumb on purpose like he sh- hurdles them all into that tiny room he's like oh there's a door here somewhere and they're like they're real like they're five minutes into this tour and they're already kind of annoyed with this guy yeah but then he brings him in to the uh the there's like a tiny hallway mm-hmm. the set design in this movie is great what did you think of like the sets and the locations in this it was really pretty everything looked like wow i, I wish i was there that looks fun yeah there is a cool like shift between like the first act and the the second act is like everything before this has been like desaturated and like gloomy and really only the chocolate was like colorful and it's this moment where they're in the tiny hallway and open up the door that the movie like changes scenery wise now there's colors everywhere uh they enter the chocolate room where he sings uh, about the imagination and whatnot. It's, it's, it's really Wonka's like whole song. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. There was a little error. I don't know if you noticed. When he puts his cane into the mushroom and uses a, uses it as an umbrella, mm-hmm. you can look at uh, previous takes where he shoved. There's like holes already oh, in the mushroom. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that I was pretty cool. That, and I was like, was that thing made of a styrofoam? Yes, it was made of styrofoam. <laughs> the uh, the flower that he uses as a teacup was made out of wax. So after like every take, you have to like spit it out afterwards. Um, but yeah, this is like the song for the movie. It's like the biggest song, I think. Uh, it's all about how like, yeah, imagination's great. Everything's great. You should be happy with what's around you. Uh, and then that fat fuck, uh, Augustus Gloop. Um, do you think Augustus uh, Gloop, you think he's into Star Wars? Do you think that's a guy who... Does he remind you of anyone who was into Star Wars? Yeah, I can see him. <laughs> I've seen, I know a couple people in my life that are kind of like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought you would. I thought you would. Um, he gets told that the river's made of chocolate, uh, which apparently in real life, that chocolate river smelled like shit. Like whatever ingredient they had to make the chocolate river, they had to like change it because it was awful. Uh, but yeah, he. Um, oh, wait, sorry. I'm skipping ahead. Sorry. Augustus Gloop does go in the river, but before that, we're introduced to the Oompa Loompas, oh, who yeah. are orange and green. So, Willy Wonka found these Oompa Loompas in Loompa Land, who are constantly being hunted by all the wild animals there. And Willy Wonka is wealthy, right? He has a lot of money. And instead of, like, buying firearms for them yeah. or uh, giving them, like, a private security or teach them to defend themselves or you know maybe him personally just hunting the things that hunt them he said hey guys come back with me and be my slaves and they're apparently <laughs> thrilled about it they're constantly singing about how happy they are they can never leave like the world has forgotten about them no one's searching for them He's that's the weird thing forever <laughs> well apparently the world doesn't know they exist but that's the weird thing he's like hey guys you live in an awful world. I'm going to bring you back. You can work for me. And at no point are they like, are we allowed to leave the factory? And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. you don't leave the factory. You he's stay here. He's like, I have one of the predators waiting out the door. You try to leave. You're <laughs> dead. <laughs> don't ever think um, about leaving. <laughs> Josie, can you relate to being inside a house of madness and not being able to leave? Be my shit. We want to be my shit. Be my shit. Hey, what's up? <laughs> there are predators waiting right outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, they he shows off his slave labor. He's really happy about it. And again, they love being slaves. They always talk about how they're happy. Because I know when I'm happy, I have to constantly tell everyone I'm happy, yeah. or else it doesn't count. Uh, but yeah, Augustus uh, falls into a tube and gets shot out like a bullet. Uh, but I love that th- this is like this is why it's one of my favorite comedic performances. I love that during all of this, Willy Wonka is more concerned with his chocolate river than he is the yeah. well-being of the kid. He's like, oh, my chocolate's ruined. Oh, my God. And I'm like, man, I've done that. This movie might have had an influence on me because I've definitely been in that situation yeah. where, like, someone was in danger, but I was more concerned about something that affected me. And I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that out loud. My um, favorite thing is, like, whenever a kid gets harmed, he's just, like, when he fell into the river, he's like, oh, I can't do anything. Suction God, it's too late. Like, every time a kid gets hurt, he's just like, oh. The God. weird thing, the weird thing is, he always talks about how, like, they can be saved. He's yeah. like, oh, we'll send the Oompa Loompas there to do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. 
But I think in the book, and maybe even the Johnny Depp version, they show that the kids are alive at the end. This movie never yeah. tells you if they're alive at the end. And so, like, there's very a vague about it. He's like, there's a chance he could survive. Yeah, because so I confirmed that they're alive. Because <laughs> I think at the end of the book, he gets in the glass elevator and they see all the kids like surviving, leaving the factory. Uh, but yeah, you leave this movie, you're like, fuck, I think Augustus is dead. <laughs> he might be actually dead. Holy shit. <laughs> Um, which makes it creepier. You're right. The movie does have a creepy tone. And by like not confirming if those kids lived or died, it really makes it so much creepier. Um, but then this is when the Oompa Loompas sing their song celebrating the death of a child. Uh, and it's always like a, uh, I told you so song. Yeah. It's like, Hey guys, why don't you sing the song? Like before the kid does something <laughs> instead, it's like, man, Eating all the time is bad. You guys shouldn't do that. It's like, well, that would have been a good lesson like if five minutes alive. ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this part, how do you feel about the Oompa Loompa songs? Because I feel like they get weird with like the text shows up. Like it's almost like a sing along. Yeah, it became like a weird Oompa Loompa AMV. What do you get when you guzzle down sweets? The songs are cool, but it was jarring when the uh, text shows up. I'm like, <laughs> this doesn't match anything. I know it really it really takes you out of it. Uh, did you put that? Did you put that music on your Zune? Are you rocking out to that on your Zune? What is Zune? <laughs> it was like an iPad uh, iPod competitor that like died like a year in. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, uh, next Wonka. You know that was a very scary thing with Augustus and the Chocolate Factory. So now they're gonna get on a boat and go through like a horrifying tunnel. Yeah. Featuring oh, like featuring like an actual chicken decapitation, which really was yeah. hard to watch as a kid. Uh <laughs> while while Willy Wonka is having a meltdown and talking about how they're all gonna die. How'd you feel about this scene? <laughs> that was actually one of my favorite scenes. Probably the my most favorite scene out of the whole movie. I don't know. All the flashing <laughs> colors. And it was so yeah. creepy and unsettling that I don't know. Yeah. It was so I cool. don't I don't know what the point of that room was, to be honest. Yeah. I'm not really sure what the point of any of that was. Traumatize him. Yeah, oh. why would? Yeah, in your chocolate factory, <laughs> why would you have a tunnel that just shows like lizards eating things, bugs on people's faces, and like chicken murder? I don't know how that helps with your chocolate factory. Puts I, him in the right mindset. <laughs> is it for the Oompa Loompas? I don't know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Is it because they're? Is it because they're so used to danger? That if they go without it, they'll become too like complacent. So they need to be reminded of the horrors yeah. of the world. I, I, how am I? How am I doing? Overthinking this children's film. Am I doing a good job, Josie? Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm sure the children are thinking this deep. Kids don't watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, kids do watch the show. Which uh, every time a parent's like, "My kid loves your show," I'm like, "Why is your kid watching my <laughs> show? Stop having them watch my show." Apologies to kids watching this. Uh, so then the ride finishes uh, and they go into the invention room and this is where the gobstopper shows up and all these kids now know they're like, oh shit, we need to get that gobstopper. They're all, I don't think they're, they're all aware that Slugworth talked to all of them, but they're, they're, they're yeah. very serious about that. And he tells them he's like, again, he's kind of gaslighting them into stealing the goddamn thing. He's like, oh man, I'd be ruined if I didn't have this promise. You won't give it to anyone. It's like, feel like you kind of want them to take this yeah Ugh. and then okay so josie say you're in a factory a, like a weird factory with like bicycles hooked up to like mixing pots and whatnot and uh the head of the factory is like hey this thing it's experimental and dangerous don't eat it what do you do in that situation i would not eat it simply good you're smarter than violet <laughs> who's like i'm gonna just shove it into my face um, by the way, continuity error, when they were in the chocolate room, they're like scooping chocolate into their face and whatnot. I never see them wash their face or hand. I don't know what happened Wait. there. Mm. Was this before or after they got cleaned on that bicycle? No, this is before thing. they got cleaned. Oh, so. Yeah. It was a, it's a very big continuity error. Because of that, the movie gets zero stars. Uh, but yeah, Violet eats uh, the, what is it? It's like a gum that makes you feel like you're eating like an entire day's worth of food yeah uh and she's like oh it's this but when it gets to the dessert the blueberry pie she turns into a giant blueberry violet you're turning violet violet what are you talking about and this is the beginning of willy wonka like 
he's trying to stop the kids but doing a bad job where he just goes stop don't like he's really yeah, i really like it whenever time he knows the kid's gonna do something like, oh, yeah no. which again this movie influenced me um when i was in high school me and my friends went to florida and my friend like t- climbed on the top of this cabana house that was like over the pool and he's like should i jump off the roof and we're like i don't know that's pretty dangerous but we kind of wanted to see him jump off the <laughs> roof so i got my camera out because i wanted to film it but i made sure i'm like wait hold on i'm like so in the video i go stop don't do it and then i go okay jump because i just wanted there to be video out of it. Because I watched this movie so much growing up. I'm like, oh, as long as you say those words, you're clear of any liability. I'm like, that's not how. Now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, that would not have held up at all. Um, So at this point, the Oompas don't even wait for the kid to leave. They're bouncing her fat ass around, singing about how much of an idiot she is. And the lesson of their song is like, uh, eating too much gum is bad. I'm like, okay. That's a weird lesson. Yeah, the other lesson is like, hey, stop being, like, gluttonous and stuff in your face all the time. This one's just like, gum is gross. Stop. Yeah, stop eating it all the time. Like, okay. Anti-gum propaganda. (laughs) Yeah, it is anti. Probably. They're probably from uh, Big Cigarette. There's a big cigarette. (laughs) They mentioned they're like, gum will stop you from smoking cigarettes. I'm like, okay, I don't know if the kids are smoking cigarettes, but uh, I guess in the 70s they were. Um, So, again, Charlie's on his best behavior so far. We don't know if he's going to give the thing to a Slugworth. It's up in the air at this point. Yeah. And then and then there's shitty Grandpa Joe that's like, hey, he just told us not to <laughs> drink this drink. We should probably drink it. He's a bad influence. He is. By the way, it's like, okay, this soda is only special because it makes you float. And then they say don't drink it. And then Grandpa's like, let's drink a little bit. It's like, okay, so let's break the rules. He doesn't know it's going to make him fly. It's like, okay, then we don't even get the benefits of flight. It's like, Grandpa, I feel like you're just trying to sabotage Charlie to screw over yeah. his life. That Grandpa should have a bad thought. He, he didn't even fathom drinking the soda and Grandpa's like, yeah. try it. Grandpa's got a problem. Maybe that's why he was in his bed for 20 years. They're like, you can't go out into the world. You can't contain yourself. You're yeah. a degenerate gambler. You're a drug addict. You're staying in bed all day. He should have got sucked up into the fan in this. Uh, Grandpa Joe should have died. I think we could all agree Grandpa <laughs> Joe should have died. So yeah, they break the rules. They almost get sucked into the fan. They learn that burping lowers them, so they lucked out of that one. Uh, but this will come back to haunt them later. Uh, the next room, this would have been the squirrel scene that you remember so famously from the other uh, film. Which, by the way, I wanted to ask your uh, opinion. Uh, what do you think is... Which Oompa Loompas are better? These weird orange guys with green hair or the one Indian guy that they copy and paste it <laughs> in the Johnny Depp movie? Which one did you feel more of a detachment to? Uh, I, I remember the... I don't know, maybe it's just because I watched it a few days ago. The orange ones. They, mm. they are all like their own person. There's the big one. There's the one yeah. with the creepy face. And the other movie, I, I can't remember what they look like. Uh, it's legendary uh, actor Deep Roy in the other movie because he's like a little guy and they just copy and pasted him like a million <laughs> times. It's just him as every single Oompa Loompa. Uh, did you see what the new Oompa Loompa is in the new movie? No. At the end of that trailer, it's Hugh Grant. So, uh, you know, that oh, little yeah. actor. Oh, yeah. yeah. That it was so crazy because why yeah. was he in a jar? Too late. I started dancing now. Once we've started, we can't stop. I'm sure that'll be revealed in the movie. I'm sure he was captured. But uh, you know that actor, Peter Dinklage, the little guy? Yeah. (laughs) He has uh, scared Hollywood, and they will no longer cast little people in those types of roles. Because every time they do, Peter Dinklage accuses them of being offensive. Uh, Because he was like the one guy who was able to break typecast. And so, yeah, the new movie, it's Hugh Grant, who's taller than me, probably, (laughs) shrunk down. And now, like... Little people actors are upset. They're like, wait, all of our roles are gone. Like, I don't know if you yeah. saw that. There's there's a new Snow White movie coming out. And there's only one dwarf in the seven dwarfs. The rest are just regular sized people. Not even like shrunken down. I think they're just supposed to be regular sized people. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, Peter Dinklage, he was able to break that typecasting. And then he screwed over every other little person in Hollywood. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I was pretty nostalgic looking at this. Like, oh, yeah, little people used to be in movies before Peter Dinklage screwed them all over. 
apparently the Oompa Loompas like all spoke different languages and they all like hung out and drank with each other every night. <laughs> I don't know if that's a rumor. That could be a rumor. I, mean, I don't know if that's true. That's a great I heard I would, I, love huh? I would love to do that. I mean, <laughs> Just... I don't all the Oompa Loompas drinking. Okay, I don't think they were in their makeup offset. <laughs> Although that is that is funnier to think if just a bunch of little people coming <laughs> orange came in, just getting shit faced. I would hang out with them. Um, so in the next room, there's a bunch of giant geese, like huge, and they're laying golden eggs. And of course, that bitch Faruka, she wants that egg yeah. right now. She wants she wants a goddamn geese goose right now. She's yeah. like, I want it now. She's she got. I think she's the only kid who gets her own song. About oh, how yeah, she wants everything so. now. Yeah. Um, and again, as a little kid, I'm like, oh, my God, I just want this woman to shut up. Like, the whole time she's singing, I'm like, I just want her to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Although now that I'm older, I'm like, man, I really wish she died last out of all the kids. Because she's kind of like the closest thing to a villain in this movie. That is true. And I'm like, I would have kept her around until the very end and then had her get killed. Uh, but yeah, uh, Josie, would you say that she's a bad egg? I would say she's a very bad egg. Rotten even. <laughs> Did you, that's, that's actually a way better pun than the movie. <laughs> Good job. Um, I did like when she falls through the chute and it just goes bad egg. <laughs> Same thing with her dad. Her dad also. By the way, they're like, yeah, it's going to take her to the furnace. And they're like, oh, the furnace might not be on today. She has a 50-50 <laughs> chance. <laughs> of <laughs> uh, so this is when they get in the stupid Wonka mobile. That runs on oh, soda yeah. and they get covered in soap. Uh, and then um, I couldn't believe this, Josie. I just <sighs> I, this this movie's woke. I don't know if you knew that uh, because Grandpa Joe goes, uh, there's more gas in this, in this than a politician. <laughs> did, did you know that's one of my favorite thing? It's like a lot of these Internet dudes, they think movies are have only been political for like five years. It's like, no, watch an old movie. They've been doing this for a really long time. What does grandpa know? He doesn't have a he doesn't have a TV. Yeah. What's, what's the last time <laughs> grandpa like voted? I don't think he's been yeah. going out to the vote. <laughs> like grandpa, what's the last time you even paid attention to a politician? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they go, th th I feel like this scene is just a pad time. Like, like it's just supposed to pad the running time. Cause yeah. what do they do? They just, they just covered in foam and then they're magically like dry cleaned afterwards. <laughs> and they, by the way, they only drove like 10 feet. Like, they didn't go far at all. Wonka's legs got tired. He didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long is this movie? Hold on. Uh, I was wondering if they had the runtime on the back and it doesn't. I feel like it went pretty fast. Oh, here we go. A hundred minutes. Yeah. So it's pretty quick. Um, that is pretty short. If, by th these days, that would be a very short movie. For some reason, they, they are very long these days. Uh, so yeah, he takes him to the TV room. Because uh, the idea is like, yeah, if you if you photograph something on TV, it sends it somewhere else. It's like, well, why not do that with, ki with like chocolate? And it's like, well, that's not how that works at all. But... <laughs> For a kid's fantasy film, like, we'll just go along with it. So they teleport a candy bar right onto the TV. Uh, do you think this is an invention that should exist? Would, would you be thrilled if you could just, like, grab candy off your TV or just anything off your TV? That would be dangerous. I mean, like, it would be like Amazon or some shit automatically charges your card. And, like, yeah. I just keep grabbing them and not think of what I'm spending. <laughs> also, Companies would this, love it. this cause is, like, a, uh, a big issue here. Again, there's just so many plot holes in this film made for, like, five-year-olds, Josie, but I have to point him out. <laughs> so he has a whole factory to make these chocolate bars, but you can broadcast one image to multiple TV sets. So if he just has, like, a ton of TV sets, he can mass-produce these chocolate bars all day oh, long. Shit. He doesn't even need the Oompa Loompas anymore. He can fire or kill because they're not actual citizens I mean, or even humans. <laughs> he can just kill his Oompa Loompa staff. Maybe that's what he's working on. He hasn't perfected it yet. I mean, he's got yeah, maybe they... working on their own and doing it. They don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They're all going to be replaced. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Mike TV, who, again, I don't know if you caught this. He really loves TV. He's like, I want to do it. And it's like, wait, did you not l learn the lesson that you'll be shrunk down? Like, that's the most horrifying thing in the world. Yeah. Also, I don't know. How, how do you feel about teleportation? If that was a real thing, would you ever have yourself teleported? Absolutely. I mean, really? if someone else did it first, 
and I saw they were at no I like yeah. pretty normal after. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about teleportation. It's it's scary. Well, there's always the theory that in uh, Star Trek, because they teleport in Star Trek, it's like the the theory is that every single time you do it, you die, and whatever comes out of the teleporter is just a copy. And it's like oh, with all your yeah. memories, and I'm like, that's kind of hard. Like, what if you're just dying multiple times? Now, a movie that might change your mind. Have you ever seen The Fly with Jeff Goldblum? Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. You might want to watch that movie. It might change your opinions on teleportation. <laughs> Long story short, Jeff Goldblum's a scientist. He makes a teleporter. But when he teleports himself, he doesn't realize that a fly got into the pod. Oh. So when he gets out slowly throughout the movie, he just starts turning into like a human fly. It's very gross. He starts vomiting acid all over his food. Yeah, I think he's I've like, heard about this. <laughs> yeah, that movie is awesome. That movie is so cool. Uh, and it's a remake. It's one of the few remakes that's actually good, unlike Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which was worse than this. Um, so, yeah, he teleports himself and he shrinks down. Uh, they put the kid, they put the kid in the mom's purse, and he's like, "Hey, we're, don't worry, we have a great plan. We're gonna stretch him out." I'm like, I think that would just murder him. Yeah, and he's like swinging the purse around while he's walking. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, and this is another one where he goes, "No, stop, come back." <laughs> yeah. no, I like, think yeah, he encouraged it this time. He was like, "I mean, you can try it." <laughs> yeah but he, he again he's a gaslighter he's trying to neg him he's like well i wouldn't do i mean it's possible that could happen but you know it's probably not ready yet probably not for you <laughs> and then the tour is just suddenly over and uh uncle uh, grandpa joe and charlie are very confused now before we go further this is why i brought you on for this yeah. shout out to the fan, and I gotta look it up, who tagged you and was like, Josie should review this movie with you. Uh, thank you for making that happen. So you were on Fish Tank, which is the most exciting reality show. I'm not even a reality guy, and I got hooked in on it. <laughs> uh, mostly, honestly, because of your clip. People just kept sharing clips of you on Twitter. <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm like, I need to I need to know what this was. So I missed like the first week because I was pretty busy. And then I'm like, all right, let me check it out. I'll probably get like a few hours worth of entertainment. And then like a weekend, I'm weekend, I'm like, well, this is the most amazing programming <laughs> I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, so yeah, you were one of the contestants in there. Uh I think I sent you a couple chats, by the way. Really? I think I'm the one who said that you're a fashion icon, and I forget what else oh, I said really? to you. Okay. <laughs> Josie, you are a fashion icon. Yeah, I've run out of clothes. I've worn them all. I didn't bring my money. This might make me seem like a bad guy. I'm sorry. I am not the one who spent hundreds of dollars getting you uh, stuffed animals. Whoa. I'm sorry. I, I bought your shirt. I bought your <laughs> shirt. That is true. I, as That's soon as enough. it was available, I bought the shirt. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, because that was one of the funny things. So um, when this was happening, I took a picture with the shirt and the internet, Twitter, Reddit, uh, 4chan, just brutal. Like, people that I know who don't even really follow my stuff, um, they were DMing me. They're like, hey, I just saw, like, a collage of you on 4chan. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's just them being like, all the Josie's fans fucking suck. They're all losers. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and I was, I was fucking loving it. I'm like, this is the funniest thing in the world. Uh, Cause they didn't realize how attention hungry I am because I have this stupid show. So I'm like, this oh, is amazing. Yeah. For me. So yeah, I was, I was super, I wanted you to win. I'm like, Josie <laughs> has to win this competition. Look, uh, I don't want to say anything mean. You know, they say if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. So I'm not going to say fuck Letty. I'm not going to say Letty sucks. I'm not going to say Letty was a dirty rat and she didn't deserve it. I'm not going to say any of those things, Josie. None of those things will I say. Um, so yeah, I rooted for you all the way to the end. And you eventually won. But before you won, this exact scenario happened. So in a way, you got to live out the ending of this movie yeah. before you actually witnessed the movie. So, in the film, uh, they go in and they're like, yeah, what, what the hell, uh, Wonka? 
wasn't there supposed to be like a life si- lifetime supply of chocolate with all these things that we were going to win? And then he pulls out the contract that Charlie did not read all the way through. I mean, it was impossible to read it. It was microscopic. It was, <laughs> yeah. Was your contract like that? Did uh, did Mr. Goldstriker have super t- fine print? No, it was uh, all in what it, 12, 12 point times new. Oh, good, good. <laughs> I just that gives, ignored yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, that's making your that's making you look a little bad right now. Next time, just lie and be like, "Yeah, it was super tiny." I can read it. Uh, but he points out that by doing the fizzy drink and touching the fan and everything, they broke the rules, so they lost. And I remember the end of Fish Tank, which, by the way, I want to apologize to all my fans for getting way too into that show. Uh, I literally had fans because I was like one of the people who was tweeting about it. I had fans being like. They were like, I'm unfollowing you until the show is done. (laughs) So you were basically locked in that room for like, what was it? 48 hours you were locked in that room? I think 48. I can't remember. Time is a Yeah, time is. How how long did it feel actually in that tank when you got out? Like, did it feel like no time had passed? Yeah, I felt like no time had passed. I was like, wow, it was all. Well, that was that was the funny thing. Toward the end, like everyone's miserable, and you're like, oh man, I don't want to leave. I'm having fun here. I'm like, I'm like, all right, she's got a win. Like, no one else can beat that. (laughs) Um, so you're in there for like, we'll say two days, uh, and then Mr. Goldstriker comes out. And basically reads the contract saying that you're entitled to nothing. There is no guarantee that the participant will receive any compensation during their time as a participant in the fish tank. Ah! Oops, we got scammed. <laughs> and that it's been a waste of time. And he yelled at everyone and then he plugged an entirely different show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then he leaves. Uh, which is like this movie. Um... And what was it? Uh, who's the uh, who's the guy who tried to stand up for you, Chris? Right? Yeah. Yeah, he loves Star Wars, and I bet he loves chocolate too. Uh, he's the one that goes in and tries to like stand up for you, and then Jason gets up. Who is, by the way, if you guys don't know, is Sam Hyde, uh, <laughs> the legendary comedian Sam Hyde, who uh, puts on a better show than celebrity boxing. What do you think? I think Fish Tank was. Way better than celebrity boxing. Uh, that's just me personally, though. But yeah, he gets up and screams at Chris and reads the contract exactly how Willy Wonka reads this contract. It says right here in plain English. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You lose. You lose. Good day, sir. Grandpa Joe is upset about this. He's like, you know what? Screw him, Charlie. We'll give Slugworth the gobstopper and we'll be rich. And then Charlie's like, you know what? I feel bad. I did break the rules. I'm going to give the cop stopper back to Mr. Wonka. And then you in the fish tank, were you directed to give queso uh, to Jason? Yeah. Um, yeah. In the other room for Jet comes yeah. up to me. He's like, you should try giving this to Gold Striker. I think he's really okay, yeah. angry. And I was like, I, I was really scared because Gold Striker <laughs> scares me. And I was like, yeah, oh, he's God, a pretty he's scary gonna guy. He's going to rip it up in front of my face. I, I did not want to do that, but. Would you like to have queso? You can sell them on the website if you want. Or just throw them out. You, they by the really way. egging me on to do it, so I was like, guess yeah, I have but- to. By the way, for fans who haven't watched uh, Fish Tank, um, which I think will be released on, like, they're going to do, like, an edited version of the show. Whenever that's available, I paid for it. Whenever that's available, you guys are going to want to check that out. Uh, Queso is, like, the most beloved plushie in that house. (laughs) And Frank Hassel had tried to murder Queso, I think, multiple times. Right there, yeah. Which, by the way, by the way, fuck Frank Hassel. Uh, when he, when he went back to the tank and was like, oh yeah, these guys are posting pictures of you, ju- uh, pictures of your shirt. <laughs> and then he says, they're all 300 pounds. I was like, you motherfucker. I am not 300 pounds. <laughs> I think, I think Frank was mad at me because a few years ago on Holly, on, on Halloween, I dressed up like Boogie 2988. Uh, I got like the same shirt that Boogie wore when he tried to murder Frank Castle. Did you ever see that video when Boogie tried to murder Frank Castle? I, I've heard of it. I didn't watch it though. <laughs> so for Halloween that year, I wore the Tomb Raider shirt and I had like a Nerf gun outside of my hand. I was Boogie. So I feel like Frank was a little biased. But he's like, that guy dressed like the guy who tried to kill me. I'm going to say that he's 300 pounds to Josie. <sighs> 
what an asshole. I also asked Alex Stein to put in a good word for me. I don't think he did. Anyway, um, so yeah, he gives the gobstopper back, and then Willy Wonka is like a noble deed in a like an un, like a cruel world or something. Uh, and he realizes that Charlie's actually good. He made a mistake, but we all do, and that he's actually good. It was really Grandpa <laughs> Joe. Really, uh, honestly, I feel like the end of the movie should be like Charlie. You won. Grandpa Joe d- is not allowed in the factory. <laughs> he has to live in bed by himself. So yes, uh, he's just like Charlie, my beautiful boy. You've won. You won it all. And when this happened in Fish Tank, I like that Jason was so. He stuck to the script so well that he just kept calling you a beautiful boy. My boy, my beautiful boy, you won! I think it's really funny because, like, through the whole show, there was like the running joke: everyone thinks I'm a boy, and it still is, I still run with it today. So it was like it was, yeah. it was fitting, it fit the joke. Oh, uh, <laughs> Josie, I again, your fans might be creepy, but the haters of your fans are insane. Uh, <laughs> quick question, quick question: How old are you, Josie? I'm 21. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, there were a lot of accusations being thrown at me and the other guys for wearing your shirt. They're like, oh, on this show, we call them cuties fans. We don't like to say the P word for YouTube, but we call them cuties fans. Like, all oh, these guys are creeps. And I'm like, I think this girl's in her 20s. I, did I miss something? <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't be on the show if she was younger than that. Yeah, everyone has uh, at least 21. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just saying, like, when the uh, the drunk fuck challenge happened, I'm yeah. like, I don't think Josie is under 20, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure the show would stop right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, God, that was a fun week. <laughs> oh, you guys are all creepy. I'm like, what the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> I bought the shirt because I thought it'd be funny and lead to a funny picture, and it did. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he tells him he won, and this happened to you, too. Jason Goldberg is like, Josie won. And then we find out that Slugworth is not actually Sugworth. He's the only non-Oompa Loompa that works for Willy Wonka, apparently. No, no, that's not Slugworth. He works for me. Uh, and you also had that reveal where Frank Castle was actually Chad King. Mr. King, come out, Mr. King. That's not Frank Hassel, Josie. That's Chad King. He works for me. Which is actually Frank Hassel in a wig. It's really nothing different. I don't know who Chad King is. It's just, a, I think it's just another alias for Frank Castle. Oh. <laughs> I think that's literally it. Uh, like Sam High, Jason Goldstrike. Oh. Um, uh, friggin' hilarious reveal when he came out of the closet. Were you like, again, as someone who hadn't seen this movie, you were probably just kind of baffled by everything going on, right? I was extremely confused. I saw I didn't look excited at all. I was like terrified. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Who is Chad King? Why is he in the closet? <laughs> Again, I, I can see, like, if I had not seen that movie and I be I was in the same thing, I'm like, oh, they're just going to troll me again. Yeah. This is clearly, like, some kind of thing. But, yeah, uh, the whole thing, I love, like, like, even Sam Hyde just starts acting like Willy Wonka. He's all excited, running around the house. Uh, yeah, he brings him into the glass elevator. And actually, when you won on Twitter, I just posted the picture of the glass elevator bursting out of the factory. <laughs> uh yeah he tells him like hey you got the factory he's like look i'm not gonna be around forever uh eventually i'm gonna retire and i need a kid to replace me who will care about the oompa loompas and not be full of greed uh yeah and then they fly away into outer uh, the, there's a second book called uh charlie and the glass elevator mm-hmm. i've never read the book i don't know what happens in it they never made a movie about it probably so a space adventure right? it's probably <laughs> a space adventure turn. to be honest <laughs> I assume that's what it is. Actually, I'm gonna look that up. Let's look. Let's look that up and see if it would have been a good movie, Josie. Let's see. Okay, they go to a space hotel. Cool. And I guess there's more things in there. It really is a space adventure. That's insane. <laughs> it's a space. I guess Wonka had his own space station. Wonka is getting scarier. He has slave labor. He has. He has inventions that are way ahead of anything else, and he apparently has. A... Are actually space aliens? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is, uh, creepy as hell. Uh, something about the American president. Holy shit. Does he go to war? I'm seeing stuff about the white house in the sequel. <laughs> now I kind of want a sequel to this. Holy shit. <laughs> um, so yes, he wins. He can move the whole factory in. 
Uh, and it's this nice, happy ending. Willy Wonka is not a violent psychopath. Or maybe he is. I don't know. Maybe he's calmed down. I mean, they've only known him for like a day. True. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it still holds up. It's still a very good, uh, it's a, it's a family. I don't want to say it's like a kid's film. It is a film for like the whole family. Mm -hmm. Apparently, uh, when the, uh, remember when they're licking the wallpaper and they're like, this tastes like that. This tastes like that. Yeah. He says the snozberries taste like snozberries. That's a, that's a very, uh, it's very edgy joke. Cause Roald Dahl, he wrote another book. Where apparently a snozberry is a reference to a dick. So basically, oh. Willy Wonka is saying that the dicks taste like dick. <laughs> uh, but how did you feel watching uh, this film as an adult, as a very mature adult, despite <laughs> what 4chan says? Uh, what, how did you feel about it? I really liked it. I went in thinking I was going to hate it. And I was like, wow, it, it was actually really funny and enjoyable. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. I, those are the best kind of family films where like. There's stuff for the kids and lessons to learn, but then there's like jokes for adults to keep them entertained too. Uh, and this is like one of those perfect balances. That's why I think it stood the test of time. I think that's why a lot of people like it. Whereas the Johnny Depp one, again, plot wise, I guess it was closer to the book, but like that film just creeped everyone out. Like Johnny Depp is fucking like, not like fun, creepy, like Gene Wilder. He's just a fucking weirdo in that. Just straight up creepy. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I guess uh, how was it watching it from the viewpoint of someone who's lived it? Uh, in, in a sense, in a sense, you've also signed a thing where you entered a crazy <laughs> world and then came out as the winner. Did, do you think that enhanced the experience for you? I think it spoiled it because when they were signing the contract in the beginning, I was like, ah, oh, man, I've just been spoiled. I know what's going to happen at the end. <laughs> oh, you muted yourself. Hey guys, interrupting the video real quick. Uh, after I got muted, I don't know how that happened, when I unmuted myself, for some reason, StreamYard switched to my webcam mic instead of my USB mic. So if it sounds bad on my end, if, if I sound bad, it is on the video's end, not yours. Don't freak out. Sorry. I don't know how the hell I did that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was I only off for like a second? Okay. Yeah. Um, wait, so when... It, when did you learn that the end of Fish Tank was Willy Wonka? When did they let you know about that? Um, as soon as I came out, I had called my mom, and I yeah. was like, did you see it? I won. And she was like, yeah, it was just like the Wonka movie. I love that movie. And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> <What's that?" laughs> well, I'm sorry it was spoiled, but... Um, uh, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, so yeah, um, that was it. Josie, again, you were on Fish Tank. You won. You won the big prize. Now, don't be like a Grandpa Joe. Make sure you're investing. <laughs> you're saving and investing. Okay? Please tell me the race car bed existed before you won. Yeah, I had that for a few years now. Okay, okay. Because I, so, you know, a lot of people win a lot of money and then... Look up, uh, look up what happens to lottery winners. Oh, Why yeah. you don't hear about them afterwards? Because they blow it on everything. Um, <laughs> make sure you're spending it wisely, okay? Maybe you'll own the fish tank one day. I Probably not. Uh, <laughs> Josie, where can we find you now, now that you're out of the tank and in the world? Where can we find you? Uh, I, I'm working on YouTube videos, and I do a lot of streaming on my YouTube channel. Sheep underscore X-I-N-G. Not pronounced sheep zing. It's not Chinese. It stands for Sheep Crossing. <laughs> a lot of Wait. people get that confused. Wait, you're telling me people actually? Yeah. I understood what it was. Everyone knows X I N G <laughs> usually means crossing. Some people think it's Chinese. <laughs> Wait, are you Chinese? No. Okay, all right. That <laughs> just even being more problematic. <laughs> But yeah, I, I do that. They're like, oh, she she looks Asian. Zing. That must be Chinese. Like, no, I think it stands for crossing, idiots. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, that's awesome. I will make sure to link to that. Uh, I, I mean, I tuned into your, I super chat at your live stream and asked you to say that I look cool to make up oh, for yeah, all the internet. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and then you had a video and you're like, let's take that internet. <laughs> yeah, no, that was the fact that you're on this is like, I'm so happy this is happening. Like, because all those guys are like, 
Because a lot of the comments were like, if Josie ever met these guys or interacted with, she'd like kill herself. I'm like, no, I bet you I could get her on the show and she'd have a good time. Did you have a good time, Josie? This is Did great. you have a good time? Thank you so much. And, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't want to gaslight you or manipulate you. Uh, I don't want you to say something on purpose just to piss people mm-hmm. off. But if you think that I am a nice looking guy and I have good fashion <laughs> sense, feel free to say that now if you want. Fashion sense impeccable. I I would wear that shirt. Yeah, and, and I'm a good looking guy. You, for, you forgot the I'm a good looking guy part. Please say the I'm a good looking guy part. Please, for the love of God. And he's good looking. Thank you so much. There you go. Josie from Fish Tank who's definitely not creeped out by me. And the collage. I mean, fuck those other dudes. Actually, no. The one I was actually talking to, he's cool. Those other guys, uh, they're all murderers, Josie. Don't talk to them. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for being on the show and saying that I am very attractive and have good fashion sense. You have new shirts coming out, I believe, right? Yeah, they're they're on their way to my house, so it's going to be coming out soon. I actually have new shirts. Uh, I don't think they've hit my online store yet. Are you a fan of the show Twin Peaks? I thought that was like a booby bar restaurant. Okay, no. There are also restaurants called Twin Peaks, but there's an old show called Twin Peaks. Uh, it's about a girl who was murdered, uh, and they always show her homecoming picture. It was big in the 90s, and they brought it back a few years ago. I sell a shirt that's basically me lo- looking like that girl with the tiara. It, I had it online a few years ago. They took it off Teespring, Josie, but I have since printed the shirts myself. They will be on the online store. And Josie, if you want a shirt with my face on it, I will send you one. <laughs> uh, because I've gotten so much attention from wearing your shirt. Maybe I'll be like in a garage you... and they're going to be like, all of Tony's yes. fans. And I don't know if you know this, Josie. <laughs> no. I, I kind of buried the lead. I am I am very famous and important. I don't know if you know <laughs> that. Uh, but yes, no, check out her channel. I love that you did a uh, man on the street style interviews. Before I switched to mostly podcasting, I used to do videos like that all the time. <laughs> Uh, here's a fun fact. If you go to a video game convention, go up to anyone dressed as Link, and when you have the microphone, just say you're here with Zelda. And then before they can respond, oh, yeah. just before they can respond, just go right into your question. <laughs> I used to do that all the time, and it drove people nuts. I'm like, hey, we're here with Zelda. So anyway, uh, and like <laughs> some of them, some of them would just like roll their eyes, but like one of them got like real defensive. He's like, no, it's like, it's like. You made me, like, start the interview over again. You just be like, what, what's Link? Um, yeah, what, what, what's Link? Is, is, <laughs> no, is Link the name of the princess Zelda's looking for? <laughs> um, but, yeah, follow her on everything. And, uh, yeah, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you're here from Josie, please subscribe to the channel. We talk about movies new and old. Uh, every Monday, sometimes I throw out bonus videos, and sometimes I do live episodes. Uh, this is the first episode I've done in a long time that's remotely. Uh, I, I usually don't do that, Josie, but for you, I was like, I'm going to do it for Josie. All right. Cause that's how important you are. But yes, thank you so much and goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talking, talking about tapes.